Welcome back, guys, to the ESL Pro League. It is Envy versus Fnatic on Cash. Coming up next, joining me is YNK and Pansy once again for this one. Uh, okay, so Cash didn't go so well on Inferno. Pretty much had to lube themselves up after that one. Uh, <sighs> now we're going into Cash, though. And what do we think? I mean, is this going to be? This is going to. They, they've got it. They've got to do better than in Inferno. They've got to do better than 16-4 because that was awful. I mean, they have to. Otherwise, it's going to be same, the same story yep. on cash too. That's that's what I was talking about in the break. I hate talking about fanatic. I mean, what what do teams have to do to beat them? Because it's the same story over and over again. Yep. First, you have to make them respect you. You can't mm -hmm. just go for some fancy place at the beginning because someone will just go for an aggressive play, and and totally disrupt you, totally wreck your mm -hmm. setup, your execution, and you know. You have to deal with that first in order to to have a chance. Yeah, the them. irony is on yeah. on on Inferno. We were, I was we were watching it. Obviously, it was like nine one or nine two at the yeah. time or something like that. JW got like one kill. We're like, yeah, because it's nothing for him to kill. There's yeah. literally everybody was dying before he could get a shot off. And yeah, he, along the same vein, it's like Sean Guerra said to me at some point. You know, when we were watching Envy on their T side on Cash, they have some beautiful set plays, including the Molly plays towards B, where they clear out just below the vents. They they literally have this beautiful set plays, but. If they don't get a chance to get to that point, you're never going to see it because Fnatic can just turn up the pace or just go for a little bit of a different play style. And suddenly it doesn't matter if you're doing this lovely set piece because suddenly the rest of Fnatic are in your face, right? And also, everyone, of course, says that Envy is you know, super, you know, kind of in your face team, just run and gun. Actually, on Cash T side, they can play quite methodically and slow. They do have some really nice set pieces. But then again, they barely got to touch any of that in the last game. So seeing this one, it depends what Fnatic comes out. As you said, it's all good and well kind of laying down all the pieces of what could work, but mm. when it's Fnatic operating at you know all cylinders, how much does that even count? Absolutely. I mean, okay, so so let's let's take you back and let's look at A and B. Obviously, they've got good T sides, but how do they hold them back on the CT side? Because that's been generally a common problem for most teams on the cash these days. Well, you know, on the city side, it's two things. First, you have to be on point individually. You know, if you go for a good, if if the setup is good, if they come your way, you need to get those kills. If you can't do that against a team like Fnatic, you're gonna instantly get traded, and you, you know they're gonna get control of the site. And for the, from that from that point on, it's pretty straightforward for them. They need to have, in my opinion, a better start in order so they can get uh, those maybe even two AWPs, which is completely viable on city side of. Uh, cash so yeah need to have a better start for sure even on inferno they did start picking up the double orb and i think it was happy who ended up picking well. it up and it started to look a little better but obviously didn't this it took so equate. long to get to it exactly yeah. so maybe if they could get that going earlier on cash sure you could see something better but it's once again i feel always in the hands of fanatic whether or not they let any team get to that conjuncture so we'll see we'll see if it happens yeah, I mean, are, are Envy in the gaming house still? Are they still down no, in that beautiful villa so. they have in France right now? I, I swear they yeah. only use that as like a boot camp prior to bigger. Before yeah. they get to the majors, yeah. etc. Yeah, and of course they did just come back from a, an event recently. But mm. uh, yeah, definitely a problem. We've always talked about Envy's a bit slow to get started. It's been a common theme for them for many a year, honestly, for, for varying reasons. Yeah. Um, is it is this just the slow start, the kick of the butt that they need to sort of wake themselves up? I mean, it might be. We saw some. We didn't see much from Apex in that, in that game. I mean, to be honest, we didn't mm. see much from anyone because no. of how well Fnatic yeah. played. But they are definitely. I mean, we 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 know that that MVS are a team that's capable of uh, with with sheer pyre, firepower battling it out with Fnatic. So they just need to step it up, and we will have a game on our hands. Yeah, and the best part being when I throw my mind back. I remember speaking to MBK about Cash specifically against Fnatic because this is when Fnatic were on that tear back. Mm. Back when it was like Pronax in there. It, it wasn't any time recently, but this was quite some time ago. I was like, I don't know how to play against these guys because literally they pop flash through everywhere. JW's in my face and I don't understand how to play them. But then obviously they did learn to kind of get through that phase. But coming back to it, I think they're kind of back in the same predicament of how do we deal with these guys? Now MBK's kind of at the helm of it. I'm curious to see how he then comes up with the answer because last time they did eventually get one, be it sometime down the line, now they have to once again do the same thing here. Yeah, I mean, for Fnatic, now Dennis is there. They've just seemed unstoppable. I mean, mm. it's they've gone. They've, if it was at all possible, they've stepped up another level, and it's uh, it's crazy that fast and loose style seems to be working well for them. Definitely, and also the thing is, when you talk about Fnatic's style, it's 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 they play like that because it works for them, right? Yeah. It, it works. Nobody so can often. mimic it. You either. know, sometimes the worst thing is sometimes I feel that other teams know what's coming, and they 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 think they're prepared for it. Like they have a setup <laughs> for it. And they still 
can't make it happen. Like you know that the JW is going to maybe squeeze in through that smoke and peek with the AWP. You're waiting for him. He does peek, he does the thing, and he still kills you. So at, at that point, there's not much you can do. It was like, oh, was it COG? It took like three losses against them on Mirage at LAN, and then the fourth, they finally worked it out. It took like four goes of mm. losing to these guys savagely to work it out. So it's like th these guys aren't easy to play against. There is nothing you can do to really get around that. And then you come down to the core dynamics and even the basics. You've got some extraordinarily good players in every one of these positions. And I think it was Anders and Samuel were talking about specialists in certain spots. You have a lot of these throughout this map as well. You know, you look at Crims, you can play like any mm. solo site so well. Now he's coupled with Olaf a lot, especially on, if you look at Inferno on CT sides, he's always kind of coupling together with those two. Dennis kind of picking up the old Pronax roles, but now he's also being like a big heavy hitter. He's not, you know, maybe Pronax who's sitting a little lower down. Dennis, especially in that last game, he didn't get to see much of that CT side, but he's really quite involved so i think it's very hard there's there's no necessarily like weak chain that they can hit at the moment yeah that's a real problem you guys home don't forget to get involved use uh, uh, at eslcs and the hashtag esl pro league we're just waiting for the uh, server to be set up for the teams i can look at the casters now henry doesn't even have his headset on so he couldn't give a monkeys right now but you guys <laughs> at home should so check out the score esports app and of course that's going to have the score stats articles and more and that is available on ios <laughs> or Google Play. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, it was just, just like a couple at, uh, like arguing. Then, looking like, at, looking at the like, lovely couple across the stage. Oh, from, yeah, come on, be a professional man. Can you just not be more involved? <laughs> 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 I really wish you guys could see. I this, know, honestly. right? Far more exciting than I'm in. glad you don't see this. It's I wish so I could unsee this, but sorry. <laughs> Matt's Matt's looking after his his uh, his young Padawan. As it seems, but uh, <laughs> is that how it's called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call it these days. I don't want you cool kids. Maybe I'm not young enough for the uh, the hip and trendy ones. Days. Uh, I'm just disappointed we get, didn't get the denim broke out for us. Oh, to be fair, I have a plan that I'm going to mm. buy everyone a denim shirt or t-shirt or some of the mm. variety. So when Henry breaks it out, we're all ready to come. We can step all look up. like Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's quite the goal in mind, but. We can we can work on it. Get a hamburger and get really sad at some point. <laughs> we can go for that. Yeah. Well. So we're just obviously waiting for this game to get underway. I can mean, you it's, tell? It's it's <laughs> it's really hard to uh, break down a 16-4. I've got to be honest because it's uh, it was such a, a devastating stomp. Well, right. We had some really nice props to de like we, demonstrate. We did have this prop, and I there was feel... like things going through it. That was about as far as we could get with it. Yeah, that was um, all Yanko, not us. It was uh, yeah. Well, I'm just standing here in <laughs> silence. I want to talk about Counter Strike. You guys are oh, crazy. I'm so sorry. Please do. <laughs> But I anyway, mean, I'm told the knife is almost about ready to okay. go. So uh, apparently, um. apparently. Sorry, so yeah, you can talk about. So CS enough of us talking about objects. It's down to Sadikist <laughs> and Henry G to try and talk about something else. I mean, to be fair, those props could actually just demonstrate me and Henry, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean, actually. Good. Well, let's talk about Counter Strike because that was a horrible passive showing from Envious. What team are you going to throw a smokes out against and expect that to be enough to defend against? Okay, anyone except Fnatic. Those guys just walked through and obliterated them. I mean, Envious was way, way too cowardly in that game. Out of the depth of that game, it seemed like no one really turning up. Some really difficult uh, occurrences, especially Apex as well. He looked very weak indeed. Apex, uh, Kiyoshima had some moments in the pit and stuff like that. But overall, as a team, they looked like a very weak unit. They weren't really ever getting going on their CT side. Terrorist was okay, but ultimately the game finished on 16-5. It was over before the second half even began, to be honest. So they get a second chance here, a chance of redemption. This is two best of one series, essentially. Each map is a complete reset. So definitely still something to work for here. Envious, they need to wake up right now. We saw them all on social media right then. It's going, wow, okay, that was absolute mess. Hopefully yeah. we can bounce back from that. But I'm not so sure they can. Fnatic looks so hot right now. Going into cash, a map both teams will play very well indeed. It's the same as Inferno. We both know there's no real advantage going into it. You can't say one team's really amazingly better than the other. But in terms of what we've seen right now, in terms of current form, it seems like Fnatic definitely have them completely against the wall here. I, I, and just to, just to sort of push that point home, and we have commonly said that they're the best Inferno team in the world. Yeah. Certainly not that game, but we do move to cash, and I actually kind of fancy the chances of the play style which Envy has tried to use on Inferno, whether they failed to use on Inferno more on this map. And the one thing about that is, is Kenny can hit his shots. If they can get him on the <clears> AWP, <throat> which you again said, why would you not have him on the AWP in any situation? Sure. If they can get him there and he doesn't anchor mid, goes to A main, they also have a guy who's probably the best solo rifler in that position in the game. Apex is incredibly good at holding down middle with just an M4. Well, the good news is for Envious, so I really like their play style on, on cash. It's very loose. They stick together. It's more that Wolfpack mentality where Happy will be flanking towards somewhere. They can go out towards middle. Lots of B splits coming in, lots of fast plays, lots of intuition used. So it's definitely not over yet. This is a full reset, as I mentioned before. We have got the knife round beginning, so I'm sure we'll be going underway very soon. Obviously, cash is one of those maps. It doesn't really matter what side you start on. It's whether you feel more comfortable on. Most 
most teams do opt for the CT start, but it's a pretty balanced map in terms of who will be going forward and taking the victory. But it's going to be happy to be the final man here. Please, we just get this over with. No, keep running. I'm alright. Keep right going. Yeah, keep, let's keep running around. I mean, we had such a short game before. We might as well at least get We've something. We've short games be... all night. It feels like I've, the night I've casted all the maps right. It feels like I've only been casting for an hour. Like it's just every single time. It's just uh, 65, 65. Well, Hopefully, we can, we can finish off tonight on a good one. I think we are deserved one. Well. We've got two of the best teams on the planet right now going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You would expect this to be a close game. Inferno didn't deliver, but looks like we're going to be getting into cash. It's going to be Fnatic starting on the CT side. Envious, of course, starting on the T side. We've seen some very fast, loose tactics coming out on the pistol here. Lots of teams just opting for five sets of armor, sticking together, move um, backing in, and we've got a disconnect. We've got to pause because Maniac coach has disconnected. So Vugo's here. Maniac was here. It's interesting seeing like going into 2016, almost every team has like a an actual CS player coach now. They've actually realized you can't just have the guy kind of being the little cheerleader behind them. It was all, yeah, it was always going to take time before yeah. it was really sort of actualized in the fact that, yes, everyone said they could have a coach, but not all of them were players. It was a matter of finding who fits yeah, where. Sure. And it's, I think it's a huge opportunity. I mean, right now with the whole thing that's going on in North America, there's the rumor of where Adren could go. And if he's someone who could be a possible that's coach, the more and more that th players start to leave and fade out, that the more that option becomes... Uh, becomes an option. He, he's that was a horribly planned sentence, but you know yeah, what I yeah, mean. Yeah, we know what you mean, but he's a great Counter-Strike mind, right? He hasn't been performing well in terms of skill recently, but he definitely understands the game. He's been calling for that team for a long time. He knows what he wants them to do. He maybe has been the weak link. So, unfortunately, that's that's the way the game is. You can't just keep someone in because you're a friend. And uh, it, we saw Mouse Boards this weekend, the first showing of their coach. They went and won their first tournament with, of the year with him. So it's definitely uh, an interesting proposition that Envis now brought in Maniac for the 2016 season. And obviously, ex-Titan player, played at the very top end of the scene. He definitely understands the game very well and uh and, sure. know, well, and, and not only that x titan he also has played with a number of these guys Keep of course in mind, he was, yeah. yeah he was playing well not even that i mean he was playing alongside apex and kenny s for a mm. period of time as well so he's uh, he's got some familiarity with with players on the team and the french scene has been sort of a circulated mix of players for some time at the top level so can you mention the matchup tomorrow, Matt? I could mention the matchup tomorrow, Henry. Why? Why don't you do that then? Well, we do. We could mention that Virtus Pro has a chance to go 0 and 8 tomorrow, Henry. And it's that one as well. Yes, Please. and that one is that one's actually a little bit. I mean, th there's a storyline that's developing with VP, which makes it curious to watch, regardless. Simply for the fact that, okay, how bad can it really get? And everyone expects them to bounce back at some point. Whether it's going to do anything for this season or not is another debate. But the NIP thing with Pith coming in, this is the start of their season. And traditionally speaking, NIP, when this before this was the Pro League, when it was still the the uh, invite division for ESCA, they were very successful in, in many regards, yeah. many attempts at getting into land finals. So they're decently good online in, in these situations. But Pith, that's the big unknown entity everyone's waiting to see. Threat is also there as well. Is he back in time? Because we were debating this doubt, earlier. I doubt he's back. And even if he was, he wouldn't have enough time to actually do anything. Yeah, so this, this so. it's a little bit early to, to count that. Yeah, I think a, you're right. Factor. But like, he, that's another one to talk about, like another massive name coming back in to kind of help Nipper. I think that's definitely needed to be in-game leader as well. He'll be actually be able to get some of the most talented players in the game together finally. And actually, hopefully, they can have a decent 2016. Very quiet showing from them in the whole of 2015. Let's see what they can bring to the table tomorrow. So it looks like we have got the coaches. The ones we've been talking about so much have... Slowed the game down slightly. It's kind of cool. Even online games, you see these coaches actually being present on the server. And that's why it's becoming a thing as well, Matt. When you're at these LAN events, that you want to be on the laptop actually in there as well to kind of Absolutely. replicate what you get online. You have the full vision and sound of what's going on. The interesting thing is there's there's a few coaches I have talked to. One being uh, Hellraiser's current coach that said necessarily, being in the server isn't necessarily the best thing because he actually likes being able to sit back and see multiple monitors. And you can't you, watch you all think, five things. Right? You would think oh. it would be like that's, that's a no-brainer. You'd want the sound cues. You'd want everything, all the little nuances that you could see yourself by being in the server. But but yeah. he th his thought was that if he gets two tunnel visioned on B, he wouldn't get a good read at what's going on at A, where he can just walk by each player in each situation. Well, I guess, so. well, my thing is that uh, you've got the mini-map and you can see, like, the key players, that's people, the, the linchpins in the round. That's what you want to be watching and kind of listening out, like you said, for little key footsteps or whatever they have, they have a, a, a decent uh, exchange going on. You can see exactly how it's gone down. You can base your calls on that. But, yeah, I still think it's pretty cool to be on the server. I think we'll see a lot of teams doing that going forward. But uh, hopefully we'll get this one underway. If you are just joining us... The first map was Inferno, and it was Fnatic that absolutely stomped Envious there. We expected this to be the hot matchup of the day, even the week, I think we called it, and it's actually turned out to be a bit of a damp squib today, but hopefully we can bounce it back into the last map for you tonight here. Can, first, you, can you define that, like the damp squib thing? That's a fairly British term. Can it you, is. Can you it's like this? it's an old English thing. I actually, me and Richard Lewis explained the whole definition I of it to this. me. Yeah, you were there for that conversation. But I still don't remember what it means. Do you know what? I will go back and do my history tonight for you. It's like, it's a really old reference to do with like, uh, 
I can't actually remember. I'll look up to it and I will make sure I have the information. So when we have this break to fill tomorrow. But what's the gist of the saying? Because I'm sure there's some people that are equally. Oh, it just basically means it's, uh, it's been uh, underwhelming, essentially. It just means like, it didn't fair. live up to expectations. When you thought it was going to be something good and it was actually just turned out to be a massive disappointment. So. Um, That's a good way to put it. Uh, I don't know the exact origin of it, but I will look it up for you and we can have a history lesson tomorrow. Excellent. There's lots of, there's loads sure of British Twitter could give phrases us a like lesson. that. And uh, they don't, you have to actually. Loads of people use them and they don't actually know the origin. It's yeah, they really just understand the preference. Exactly. Like, or the, uh, the reference every time it's inserted. But there we go. Speaking of inserting, we need to get Maniac back in that coaching slot, and then we'll get under underway now. Uh, force buying in the first game. Uh, I thought it came from the second one, kind of second round one from Envious on their CT side. Kind of hurt them that they couldn't get Kenny S onto the AWP immediately. However, the later ones I actually thought were out of necessity. They were so far behind at that point, they didn't really have much of an option except to try and get rounds on the board. What's your thought in particular on cash? Because it's not quite the same amount of choke points. It's not quite the same utility usage to try and shut them down on entry. It, this is the thing for Envious. On, the, on their T sides, they can be much loser here. They don't have. To, it's not the kind of map where you need to push back CTs time and time again. You actually have different opportunities. Like mid control is pretty easy to obtain as a T's, especially depending on the, the CT setups here. That's what Envious will be going for. They like to use their spawns and like to boost people up very quickly towards middle and get control of the vents and go for B splits. They're very good at those B splits, especially like Hiroshima and Apex were deadly on this map in 2015. Though. They were so good at getting into that bomb side, just completely wrecking people with AKs. I'm sure they can be a little bit more um, charismatic going into this map and actually have the kind of personalities we're used to seeing from these guys. They looked a little bit rattled on Inferno. It seemed like once they started going down to the 6-0 six, six territory, they didn't really have to bounce back. They never really got going. And they're going to be starting on the T side here, which I actually prefer. I feel like this is where they can actually potentially win a pistol. They're very good at the force buys in this, on this map as well. We know that they almost defined the A bomb side take with the Tech 9s and seemed like they were the ones that just kind of showed how strong that can be when you have the right players on your team. Very simple executions, two smokes, flashbangs sticking together and making sure those Tech 9 running gun potential is fulfilled. So I expect to see a lot of that. I think with the four spies here. I, I think, think the T side four spies, like Yanko was saying, that Maniac wasn't necessarily changing anything in terms of the T side because last round bonus is actually more favorable. Yeah, it's just, it's always been this problem for their CT side. Like that's what we saw at uh, in Belarus. That was a very that was a thing that always threw them that game against Navi because they just kept four spying relentlessly. I feel like these. these... Uh, I found the issue. Go on. NBK is trying to join Coach, and if we can go and spec, yeah, there he's actually getting a spawn right now. So he's kind of cyborged into NBK, and that might be a problem. That is a problem. So it might be a config issue. I feel like... And oh, then no. that time he tried to take over half. No, I think he really wants to be a player. That's what he's trying to say. I really want back in the roster, guys. Let me just, let me just possess one of you. Well, we saw him racking heads in Henry's G's in San Jose. So maybe he's ready for a comeback. I Andrew's carried, to be fair. <laughs> to be fair, Andrew's carried. Maniac had only just retired at that point. You would expect him to carry. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> he was like, he bought him frag by a considerable <laughs> margin. Somehow he's the only player and uh, didn't really show up. He actually said, I'm nervous. I'm not really sure I'm not killing anyone. <laughs> oh quote God. on TeamSpeak as well. <laughs> like, he's the one getting nervous against Moses. Like, I get, I get nervous against Moses too. What? In game or out game? Out of game. Yeah. Well, look at him. He's gorgeous. He is cute. Whoa, wait, what? So you're sleeping with another man and telling me another guy's gorgeous. That's fine. This is objective. He's objectively right now, handsome. Henry. We just went past Valentine's Day and you dropped this on me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't well, have done it beforehand before I bought you those roses. Hey, man. I'm just looking. Nothing wrong with that. That's true. My dad always says that if he touch. stops looking, it's because he's dead. So. <laughs> That's a fair statement. Well, it looks like, guys, we are waiting for the coach situation to be rectified. Hopefully, you can stop listening to this absolute shanter going on right now. And we can get going with the game. Maniac, for some reason, can't join the spec slot. Production, do you have an update for us as to specifically what's going on? They're working, They're working on it. Great on bit it. of that intel is, for us there. Fantastic amount of information. However, let's use this opportunity to talk about something that I find a little should bit interesting. Should we start the podcast again? We could start the podcast. Let's start the podcast The Henry off. G experience is bow on air. I'm joined by my sidekick, Matty Trivet. How it's, are you? It's a pleasure to be on this show, as always. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the interesting thing about this year's league with Virtus Pro starting off the way they did, there's no free kicks anymore. Dignitas, SK, they've all stepped up. FaZe has started off the year well. I think that due to the rise in CSGO, the stability and uh, just 
viability of playing the game and having a career out of it has made these sort of back-end teams that, remember last year, like, for example, if you had the top six teams, that was clear-cut. Yep. But everyone beyond that, it was a toss-up week to week. That's not going to happen anymore this year. Breaking into the top ten is going to be a hard thing no, this year. absolutely. Like, teams like Dignitas, they're so hungry for it. They're, they're working, like, incredibly hard behind the scenes. They're coming in. They've made decent roster changes. Like, it, it's teams like the, the Dykeverdis Pro, your phase and stuff. They've got these superstar lineups, but they're just not working as hard right now. They're, they're actually getting a little bit to the point where Dignitas is going to take these guys over. And ultimately, I think they might be already there. Like, it's the fact that FaZe are going into tournaments at the beginning of the year saying, oh, we, we haven't practiced enough going to this event. Like, what? what is that? Like, why, why are you not practicing? Yeah, like, that's getting, insane. You're, you're joining the biggest org in the, do you in the think, planet. And... Do you think part of that could be simply right. that... I forgot where I was going with this, but no, basically <laughs> okay. that the new teams are hungry, the old teams are worn out, and now this year we're starting to see, because you, you and I have discussed this as well, we've done sort of three, I guess, events now where it's been Tier 2 to Tier 3 teams. Yeah. They've actually played more lands this year than the upper team just because of the whole minor system and everything. Yeah, sure. Do you think they're more hungry in terms of the fact that they aren't burnt out? It depends what your definition of burnt out is. Like, if you're th the fact that we're going to 2016 and they haven't really played a tournament, they've just been on holiday instead of actually working. Like, this is this is a normal job now. This isn't like, you know, it's not your hobby you're doing in your spare time and you're actually enjoying it. You're getting paid a massive salary. You've got a lot of uh, lot of attention on you. It's it's detrimental to you as a player and the organization you work for if you're not practicing. And that excuse it doesn't fly with me anymore. And I think the guys in Dignitas, they've got a great platform to work with, great backing. They've got ample opportunity to practice. And they, they want to be, they don't want to be known as the, the top 20 team anymore. They want to be up there. They want to be showing they can compete. And they're putting in the hard work. And obviously, like, it's one of those things where it's a team people maybe underestimate. They haven't done necessarily enough homework going into them. And it's like maybe that cloud nine effect we saw at the beginning of like 2015 when they kind of were the, the surprise pack package because no one really seemed to rate them that much. But um, I feel like Dignitas got a fantastic year this this, this in going into 2016. It must be quite gutting for AZ. Like he was the one that dropped out of that team. Maybe felt like he was a little bit above them in terms of skill. And now he's getting into the more difficult realms of having to grind this one out. And they seem like they've already done the hard work. Mm -hmm. I, I'm super impressed so far with that lineup. I really am. I think. Yeah that they have shown massive improvement and willingness to work as a unit. Last night, that was very apparent. Mm -hmm. well, but we've been told, Henry, that we've got about, well, it was about one minute what they told us, but it's been, I'd say, 30 seconds. No, we're going now. Look at that. We're going live. Here we go, then. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final map here this evening. Team Fnatic going up against MVS. We've got the pistol round coming in. MVS starting on the T side here. Peter 50 for Apex. Four sets of armor for the rest of the team. He's also got a smoke and a flashbang looking towards Fnatic. Four sets of armor for them. Crims with the diffuse kit and the HE grenade. Let's see if there's any aggression coming from the CTs just yet. It's going to be Flusher spotting in towards our B storage area and seeing if he can find anything to work with here. Just going to be Kiyoshima holding towards T spawn. So no one really showing their hands just yet. MVK is going to go to a spot towards middle. And remember, Fnatic just absolutely stomped Envious on the first map here. So they'll probably be going in for this. All guns blazing. Let's see how this round does. There it is. Well, that's a good start. All <laughs> off. MVK down. That was bomb as well, but I oh don't know. Take that back. He just did drop it on the inside. Apex is going to be able to grab it without being spotted. So no harm, no foul. And three out of the four players are envious right now, leading off toward the A site. Crims is the only one directly inside of it. He'll be behind Quad with Dennis. A quick rotation available from the highway. And he's actually going to go position himself there now because Olaf is once again peeking toward middle and giving them that information. And as we see it, Happy trying to use that cheeky little gap underneath the roof. Well, looking like they will be setting up for a classic envious A attack. They still have one smoke. That's going to be dropped now, and you should expect this is the explosion on the quad. Ooh, that knee goes a little bit deep to do mad damage, but it's nonetheless, it's going to be Kenny that gets the first kill. Dennis responding and happy. It actually favors Envy on the entrance. They're going to try and go for a very quick plant out of this. No utility off on Apex, but Dennis can't afford to push in because they haven't located ex exactly where Kiyoshima is, if he's peeking behind that quad position or not. Olaf's found his way toward Forklift, though, and that could actually favor him in this situation. And keep him unhappy. He's still waiting inside a main. So they've got a cross position. It's going to have to be quick and concise. Olaf pops out, takes down Happy, but the rest, it all goes Apex's way. And it's Kiyoshima inside the site with Apex to work with against Olaf. And that's how it'll end as well. Interesting round there. Even after getting the first pick, Envious dropping back to the A bomb site. One smoke towards Highway there. Simple flashbang towards Quad. Swarmed it with the Glocks. And this, the entry is working in their favor. Really nice work with the PC50 and Apex as well. Really went to town there. Headshots all over the place. And I said, this will be a relentless game map. In terms of the force buys from both teams, like, they expect no one to give in. It's going to be Fnatic to come in first with the CZs, Deagles, and PD50s as well to see what they can do with this armor. And uh, Envious have uh, 
three SMGs actually, and Apex just on a P250, so actually it won't be the easiest round for them. It's going to be a struggle. Happy, meanwhile, has made it up middle, undetected, so he should be able to figure out right now and immediately. Good fire. Placed out on JW, but that A is open. Instead, he's going to do what will work out to be better. Although we won't know well. it yet, but cover off this Z connector. He'll get every rotation, and Envious are going to walk into an empty A site. Yeah, this is the thing. This is the point where Fnatic probably want to be saving the armor they have, and Dennis somehow reads that play from Happy. Gets the AK-47 as well. They're actually going to have a look into this round now. They want to see if they can do any more damage here. On to Envious here. They are retaking the side. Crims with a second headshot now. It actually goes the four and three man advantage in their favor. Full retake coming in. It's fine. On the Swedes. Apex, MBK, and Kirishima is holding tight here. They haven't got a kit, so they need to find kills very quickly if they have any chance of actually doing anything. It's considering that the plant as well. You'd assume this round is going in one direction, but there it is. It comes out to a two on one. Pick up, though, from Dennis. Apex now left against two. Has bombed down. He needed to hit that shot. Dennis has been only in his low on HP. Thankfully, he does. Because he had the time, but that could have been a little bit awkward for a moment if he had gone back out and lost the duel. Well, that's the thing. That's like one of the worst positions to be in in clutch situations. Coming out that doorway when you can't really plant any sort of angle to view the bomb from there. You have to come out and hope for the best. All he had to do is to take down the diffuser. He did it. And uh, Sal definitely thought about which way that door opens. Because if it opened the other way, it would be such a yeah, more favorable sure. position. Basically, I'm not surprised about this at all. Fnatic going with the force once again. They took all five players down. And I said they were going to be relentless in this game. So they'll be going for a force by here. I'm not sure I agree with it in the grand scheme of things. But let's see what they can do with this one. I've got decent utility to work with. Five AGs, some smoke grenades, flashbangs as well. Let's see whether they're able to find this opening pick. Actually, have a huge head drop going into Happy there. And MBK taking down Dennis to kick things off. MBK now inside of the site as well with his teammates. Has lots of support system. They're going to leave Happy out. And this will catch off Olaf early on this rotation. He's not yet spotted him either, so... Happy still waits with 18 HP, but he'll easily catch off Olaf when he walks in. If he walks in with that pistol instead, though, it's going to be Apex that faces him walking out from A main. And Olaf winning that duel gets a rifle out of this, but Happy needs to be careful now because he refaces that, hoping he can get the trade. And it was JW instead that he got, which means another rifle down for Team Envious. Remember, we're about to go into round three, so all the more they can keep up, the better yeah. and longer they can keep this economy rolling. Is Kenny? Good shot, at least, onto Flusha from Quad, but MBK, he wants to try and rectify the fact that they have lost members and make sure those guns don't get picked up by Fnatic in turn. Well, the force by not really working out for Fnatic. They do manage to drop two of the French players down, but it's going to be Crims to be the only player remaining for Fnatic there. Didn't manage to salvage a weapon either, and you can see how that's going to affect them going forward. Envious definitely with some decent footing going into this second map now. going to be 4-0. You can see the Fnatic can't really justify much going into this round. going to have Eagles and a P250, a little bit of utility to work with as well. Crims has gone for head armor. That's really kind of weird, considering he's going up against AKs. Surely just get body armor, but uh, he's gone for a bit more of a heavy investment here. He will be making his way towards that A bomb site, and uh, Envious aware of the situation. They would have felt the head armor last round, and as we'll be playing this nice and slow, trying to establish if there's any stacks for the CTs here, and just work a pick, stay together, simple smokes, and uh, take over a bomb site. He's going to wait on the inside of the doorway. Apex has already found his way to lockers, so there won't be anyone caught in transition, but they do need to be aware. Both Dennis and JW are on this site, and they are slowly bringing over more players to try and go in. So these pistols are in an all right position. I don't say it's going to be exactly favorable by any means, but that smoke does sort to deter those positions. Molotov out on the fence, and the first kill does go the way of Crims. Now the stack could actually be opportune. Fading away inside the smoke will keep them alive longer, and Crims nearly overfaces and throws away what is a man advantage, but smartly on this, Envious is going to run away. Olaf tried to hide. He tried to get in the corner, and unfortunately, MBK showed up before he could get there. And that now means they've got the escape route planned. They can get back with this bomb and evaluate... Other opportunities. Actually, this is even smarter. They fade away like they're going to. That forces a rotation out, and now they'll go back in toward the A site, which now just has Crimson JW instead. Well, Crimson got the 5.7 and the kit as well. We have got a AK-47 salvage by Dennis, so this next fight is going to be massive. It's going to be Kenny has to take down JW, and we still have Crimson lurking on that bomb site. Has got Apex on very low HP. Dennis coming in with that AK, doing some serious work now. Brings it to a 3-on-3. Three three. Just kills all over the place. MBK with a double. That should seal the deal here, and it's going to be Crimson, last man to drop. Envious go up 4-0. Wasn't as clean as they'd have liked, but doesn't matter. That's about as many rounds they got in the entire first map, so they're probably pretty yeah. happy at this moment. Exactly. We did it. <laughs> no, we're not starting that. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough of that this week. I know. Shout out, Zareem.
Uh, either way, they are going to get the guns back up, and it's going to be JW that goes immediately for the AWP. Now, he has to go glass cannon still, so this is going to be a little bit weary for him. And he's going to go straight to B for the fast face. Drops down already, and no one quite in position on the other side to receive that. More so, Kiyoshima with bomb is waiting for any aggression that would come out from Fnatic, and so far there isn't going to be any. Olaf's covering off middle again solo. Pretty straightforward, pretty default setup. The big difference is just that JW does have this AWP. Look at Kenny S though. Aggressively come out towards middle. Will be going straight towards highway with his AWP. He's going to face. Not going to have any opposition just yet. Spot does him. spot the head just about of Crims there. That could have been a massive pick to open it up. Crims is able to reposition himself now. CT's not reacting just yet. You can see Flusher has pushed him towards B's door. It's actually going to be left there alone now. They are feeling this mid to A presence coming into fruition. The other good thing about this is that just sitting out inside mid right now. They have managed to break out both sides of the vent. It's MBK that did it, and that means that the sound trigger won't exist if they elect to go in late, and there'll be less warning for the players inside of B. But right now, the aggression is heading over toward A. Happy's made it over to the right side, stage right T side of entry onto A. As Crims is waiting toward the slide, he's got, as we hear it, the AWP nearby, but it's not quite in a good position to get the shot against him, Kenny. Either way, three face, that's a wide peak, goes on the back of a flash. Dennis has worked up toward the forklift, and it might actually cut off MBK, but he gets the better of the shot, despite being low on HP. And in they'll go, Olaf gets one on return on the rotation, but Keo takes down Crimson now, he's the only one in the site, he's gotta stay alive. A kill is fine, but his low HP is gonna be a problem, because Kiyoshima is gonna punish it, and immediately the bomb will be planted. The Molotov failed as well, it just clipped and didn't make it until the end. So they get away with that plant, and Kenny's gonna get flush up. Nice play there from MVS. Simple A execution coming in. You can see how low HP Kiyoshima and Kenny SR, but it doesn't matter. Kiyoshima goes to his face, takes down JW, and that's another round going in favor of MVS. It's going to bring the scoreline into 5 0. You can see that's affected Fnatic's money as well. They can buy this round, their maximum loss bonus could be Famuses, could upgrade and decide to go for scouts, maybe, but. At this point, it's looking like they're kind of deciding they'll go for the partial by going forward. So Envious, that round, getting full control in the middle. We saw Kenny S get on towards that highway position. Did go for the spot, pushing the CTs back. Lack of vision for them. And the full execute. Double Molotov towards the quad. And swarming the bomb site, making sure trades are efficient. Two and one in the end. Could have gone either way with that HP, but here we go then. Round number six. Heavy play from the CTs towards B storage. This is that aggressive face and so much damage done on MBK and Kenny. They're going to read this as a stack, and it does cause rotations, but... Done decent damage to MBK and Kenny, as you know. That's, so. Well, that's the huge part of this, and Kenny got caught with the Molotov out trying to cover off Checker Room. Back to A they'll go, and this is actually the right call. Krim's going to be the only one here. And he'll wait with just a Deagle, which can do massive damage, considering there's two low HP players. More than that, Apex gets caught going above, and Dennis, that shot on Kenny as he's already scoped in is even more impressive. Thankfully, the AKs hold true and get two back, but they're still only in a two-on-two, -two, and with low HP still on MBK, and this isn't a done and foregone conclusion. Flush it as well as the CZ-75, which in the right range can be lethal. It'll pick up the scout on the way by. There's an AK just in front, but that's a desperate position to go for. Obviously, he'll be found out before that flush shot. Doesn't know that MBK's there, and that would have been an easy pickup if he had. 6 nothing now for Envious. Yeah, MBK had a quiet map on Inferno, that's for sure. Picked up three rounds there. Three kills there, sorry. And um, they did what they could with the Desert Eagles. Dennis, actually one of the scariest pistol players in the world right now. He's proven time and time again how efficient he can be with those weapons. Gets an absolutely glorious Deagle headshot there from the CT truck. Not quite enough. Doesn't really inflict too much damage at this stage, considering Envious with six rounds in a row. Their money's pretty decent right now. You can see Kia Shiva's on 10k. But the double orb setup coming in now for Fnatic. They're changing the pace here. They need to be going for these first picks. Let's see how JW and Dennis do a protest situation. Dennis towards the A storage area, trying to just look in by himself. And then we have the nades going over towards Toxic, actually. It's actually pretty efficient as well. They actually get Kenny S down to 57 HP. They didn't go for the boost as both players lobbing some grenades over, doing some def fairly decent damage. Happy's going to go back and lurk outdoor as well. His favorite thing to do. He's actually reversed the spray in case anyone is pushed up into the corner. And he'll set for a bounce smoke that covers between the red crate all the way to the corner. Blinding off both quad and fence, but Dennis gets the shot out regardless and before it blooms. So NBK goes down, they've got to find entries. Kiyoshima, he's your next man in to try and do it. But it's not going to be enough, and Kenny can't get that off into a favorable position. So there's two ops. JW, Dennis, and two M4s against just the two AKs of Apex and Happy and Happy already inside this site. 
He may actually get away with this where he's not been spotted, but he wants to try and just make sure he holds his angle and doesn't make a move too quickly because he's trying to allow his yeah, teammate to get it. a pick from mid, and he might actually get one as he faces out toward the quad. That's the indication in Q for Happy to go as he catches them off, and it works perfectly. Very smart from Happy to allow that to all transpire, and despite losing his teammate, he's now got the bomb down. One versus two. Molotov, that'll force him to the right side. JW's holding the angle, but Happy still hits the shot regardless, and it's left to flush you. Smoke out as well to extinguish the flames. Now Happy... Does he go back to the AK in this situation on just 16 HP, or does he have the courage and audacity to try and face Flusha, who's going to lurk through that smoke and just get in the position? What? what happy? What in the hell was that? An incredible shot, and it stays 7 0. Four on two situation, and that play from Happy and Apex. The synergy of those guys was just so on point in that situation. Happy staying alive just long enough to allow Apex to cause a distraction from Highway there. He comes in, finds two frags, and that 1v1 play. What a shot that was to finish things off. No scope through the smoke. Somehow, it looked like Flusher had that dead to rights. He was in the perfect position, read exactly where he was, jumped through four, he was low HP. That was a done round, and it's happy to continue this onslaught here. Seven nil in favor of Envious. Insane. That round. was so smart. He knew that he'd already gotten inside the site. No one had a clue he was there, so he could just wait. And they completely overlooked the possibility. They would have assumed that he was with Apex, that they were working in tandem. And but they were just not side by side that's for sure you assume this is a tactical pause coming in for Fnatic now after be. that like you need to have some time to chill out like they normally say when they have these pauses it's time for them to kind of oh uh, okay wow not. could be technical well, fair so enough. happy as soon as he ate, got aces but clutches out that crazy round goes right up to 183 ping <laughs> full downloads come in to celebrate why not get the torrents on yeah absolutely he's already downloading the replay yeah. <laughs> well there we go it's gonna be Fnatic with that difficult situation again they have enough to buy you can see crims could drop an awp it's gonna be a really difficult decision going forward i guess go for the famouses maybe bring out an orb as well see what you can do with it at this point you need to get around on the board and uh the money like i said before is absolutely fine for mvs you can see mbk on 6k kishima on 9 apex on 7 and they already have an ak and an ewp before the buy as well so they're absolutely fine one player disconnecting i assume that's the the lagger happy yeah, he's gonna go but so far Matt, after getting completely trounced on Inferno, we've got Envious backing themselves into this game. 7-0. Shout Matt. out to Observer Rush. Why? was he done? I don't know. They just decided to give him some credit for change and put his name on the screen. Okay. Well, yeah. Shout out to him. Shout out to anyone involved here today. <laughs> or indeed, <laughs> Counter Strike, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Um, yeah, let's, 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 this is like night and day compared to the first pump, right? Like, MVS have finally showed up. They're hitting, they're winning the clutches, they're getting entry kills. Fnatic kind of got themselves in this situation, the double force by to kick things off, but I, I think in some instances they're warranted. It, like, it, it's what we talk about in the CT half keep force buying, keep force buying, and get yourself in this sort of rut, but looking like it could potentially be 8 0 here for MVS. You also mentioned that you would like to see Envious start out on the T side because yeah. obviously their CT was so lacking and you wanted to make sure they were hitting their shots. They could be a little bit looser. So far, that's worked out perfectly. Well, they've got the AWP to Kenny. He looks like he's got his confidence back. He's getting towards middle. He's taking faces that are a little bit uh, audacious and uh, making it work for him as well. And this really smart play there, that clutch especially, that shows you this team have finally woken up. They're actually communi communicating correctly. Apex is very quiet on Inferno. He's actually had a very, he's been very influential in one of the key rounds of this first half here. That clutch, four on two. Those are the kind of clutches that get you godlike status. Happy especially, that was so smart from him. The fact he even got that nose cup off in the end was just insane. But like I said, looking like Fnatic are going to struggle going forward here. This could be another round going in favor of MVS. We did have one player lagging. This is online CS, but he is back. We're ready, I think. You think? I like it. Well, all right, we're on go we've, TV. We've so. got a, a, a yeah, minor delay, so we okay. should be back any second. And underway as you guys see it. But this uh, hopefully serves to favor Fnatic in a lot of ways, that they can take advantage of this momentary pause in the action and catch their breath, not only after being slaughtered by Happy, but yeah. just get things together in total. Their money, as it's been on screen, everyone can see it, but obviously not in a position where they can really do much this round. They're going to have to wait it out. They could level it out to 2,000, so they can easily force up pistols in this situation. This is the thing. At this point, when you can get an AWP and four Famouses, I would say let's go for it. Let's, let's try and make something happen here. Maybe you get the AWP, okay, go for an initial pick towards maybe Squeaky Door or with B Storage, trying to make something happen here. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, wouldn't I, be, guess if you're I wouldn't be surprised here. if Fnatic like, went for that. And... Uh, but they could, they definitely could do this, the former option as well, and just go for some PT fifties and play the safe game and make sure they have a really strong buy and try and get that double orb setup going again. Maybe you remember that it was a four on two. That round should have been a win. The fundamentals are there. The approach was good to the round, making picks, sticking together. It was just a really, really impressive round from Envious to take that one away from them. So happy is back. 
and I think we'll be underway momentarily. We should be absolutely so. So long as everything looks normal once he gets into the server and the ping feels fine. I've missed on that CS. Have you? Yeah. I haven't cast it in a while. We yeah. haven't actually. Not since the Frag qualifiers light? for no right qualifiers. Oh, I know for you're the right. Minor. Yeah, it was the beginning of January, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's been a while since we casted like a triple A game actually. That's very true. We've been doing minors and uh, APM, so this is kind of cool. Kind of makes you appreciate it a little bit more when you uh, can see more clear mistakes and less creativity at some of the lower levels where they're yeah. still kind of finding their feet as a team. But I would say that's what Fnatic's been doing. Well, in the this key game. thing with this is like these guys can make sort of. General Counter Strike mistakes, but they're, they're, their individual skills so high, it doesn't it doesn't reflect so badly on their rounds, right? They can still recover from little nuances being made, and it's going to be a partial buy coming in from Fnatic here. So they're going to get a scout on Crims, investing in some body armor as well. And uh, Dennis has actually gone a little bit ham. He's gone down seventeen hundred dollars. He's gone for head armor again. I'm not sure why they're buying head armor, Matt. They don't need it against AKs, but screw it. Let's just buy them anyway. Why not? Yeah, it looks cool on their heads. That's why. They like the way the helmet feels. They're going to try and flash in for it. And MBK will get all off, so they don't go for that force that you would have liked to have seen. And MBK gets first blood. That allows as well the boost that's already happened for Apex to become more viable. He can just watch the vents. There can't be anyone to try and catch them off in mid. They've got that at least covered off so far. And Happy again lurking out toward that squeaky position. He's just going to wait for the call from his teammates. They could actually go for a three-pronged approach at this point in time. If they can clear flush NZ, they'll just walk up middle in through a main and Happy out the doorway. There's not much Fnatic can do in that situation. Well, they've lost first player in form of Olof Meister, but Dennis, there he is again with his pistol play, stepping up, takes down Happy. At least brings this to a slightly more favourable situation. And that was an early lurk. Happy went without any more walking from me, He wanted the information, so now they'll fall off that a little bit. The problem is, watch this rotation. Two players coming down with the pistol, and JW's already got Apex, who was low on HP. They need to make sure they hold this together, Envious, because they were a little bit hesitant, and just that early aggression from Happy almost cost them rather than favoured them when they look to go B. MVK will get Flusha. Inside the site, regardless. And Crims will upgrade to an AK and imagine just look for exit kills. Or, okay. All um, right. Well, he was a player that's on very low money as well. I'm really surprised he's actually trying to go with this, but there it is. He does go down in the end. They're actually okay with the cash now. So they get a really strong buy going with this one. It's 8 0, but still plenty of rounds to play for. We still have seven to go, Matt. So I feel like they're, they're okay. It's not like they got to the point in no return at this stage by any stretch of the imagination. Olaf Meister considering his buy as well. They're going to have four M4s here. And AWP back onto JW. Let's see how he decides to approach his round. The double up setup was effective for them. Going to be going back to the solo play as well. Looking like JW will be coming in towards middle. Looking for anyone that decent spawn to face before the smoke blooms. And it's looking like potentially another A attack coming in here from MVS. It's going to be happy to get dropped first. Walks straight into the crosser there of Happy. Uh, of JW, sorry. And brings it into a 5 on 4. But MVS reacting straight away. They're going to hit A any second. Apex was actually blinded up by that initial flash that went into A-Main. It could have caught him off, but then it's almost good Fnatic don't go because it would have left them open and vulnerable to those trying to come through. Squeaky Dennis with two quick kills. Apex gets a response, but Crims is there to trade that. And finally, Fnatic with their claws firmly in a round have just kind of yes remaining on 12 HP and already spotted out towards Squeaky as well. Nade doesn't quite go through the door, but they'll shut it. And JW can't line that up, so. He's got Bomb still to play with in a minute on the clock, but I highly expect that Fnatic will break the silence now and reset the money bonus too, keep in mind. So it's important that they do keep four alive here. Thankfully, JW allows yeah. that to happen. You're absolutely right. The fact they've made this quite a relatively clean run and you're dropping one player as well helped tremendously. It's like, you can see the money there. Had they dropped more players, had to reinvest a bit, they'd be left on zero, meaning if you do lose this round, the full reset comes in, you're in a world of pain there. So that run there, Fnatic changing it up a little bit. They got JW towards middle. Thankfully, Happy walked right into his crosshair, funneled the rest of the T's in towards the A bomb side. Dennis just ready that forklift area. He's had a, considering his scoreline, he's actually had a reasonable game. He's got 10 kills after nine rounds, so he's been fragging consistently. Gets down two with a double spray down. And finally, Fnatic arrive on the scoreboard here. Of course, so we have another pause. Why not? Is this another technical issue? Let's have a look at the what pings. Yeah, Happy lagging once more. So. Happy is sad. Happy's internet is sad. So we've got 90 seconds to film up. Um, I mean, that's that's longer than you and I can normally last. <laughs> so I don't know how. Hey man, I've been practicing. Good. I haven't. And I'm. <laughs> you haven't. No. <laughs> Good to know. Anyway, um, so we've got 90 seconds to fill here. Uh, Happy's been dropped out of the server. And finally, Fnatic have that round on the board. So that round it was quite a passive hold from them. It was waiting for MBS to come towards them. They get the first pick. It was actually kind of gifted to them in some senses. Then 
envious game for that pretty classic a execute there two smokes coming out molotov's quad burst out together dennis with a very strong hold there do we feel like they're going to go with that sim similar mentality once again fanatic maybe they try and mix things up now and try and get those first door picks going in i mean the thing is there that they looked like they actually wanted to push a main which would have been the worst possible scenario and the at fact that, point, that three yeah. were already at the squeaky door yeah. so that could have actually backfired it was really almost opportunistic that Fnatic sat back with that but oh we're back it's hard to tell yeah we are we should be ready to roll i'm glad we didn't start on a podcast because that would have been annoying to cut it off it's yeah, always such good content wear those out. yeah well round number 10 comes in so Fnatic finally do get himself on the board here but like we said they kept four guns as well so the hard reset won't be too much of an issue should be able to have enough to buy next round if they do lose this round but jw there we go so he's changing it up he's gone towards squeaky door trying to find that first pick but it's gonna be kiyoshima to get it he takes down flusher this is different, though, with JW. He's yeah. not pushed this. The door's opened inward. They're going to know he's here. They're going to be expecting it. He misses that shot. Shut the door and get away. And he can't rush past it because the spray will come through. And he's already on 46, so it wouldn't take much to put him down. But he has to make that jump around the corner timely. Because if anyone had been waiting at A main, it would have caught him in the motion. Five and four. Plenty of time and utility left for Envious to work with here. You can see JW did go for that aggressive pick. We kind of said whether he's going to change his mentality up. Did go for the pick. Lucky to get away with his life, to be honest. And now Kenny S keeping that confidence, working its way in towards middle. Fluffs the Molotov up a little bit there. It's not going to matter. No one's there, but Olaf Meister backing off towards the A-bomb side. It's about the easiest Molotov to throw in the game, so wow. interesting. Obviously, multitasking with his mind and catches himself off guard. But they're going to go into B. Kenny doesn't care. His teammate gets in the way. You'd say it every time, Henry. Take the shot. It doesn't matter. He gets the kill for it. Yoshima does end up going down to Olaf when he crosses over through the smoke, but NBK manages to follow the tracers back to their source. And now it's another bomb plant for Envious. Remember, money reset. Yeah, they need to try and do problem. something with this. Now it's just Dennis as well. He gets one on the entry into the site. He's going to try and use this headshot position and pop up at the right time, but he can't yet move across and into the site because he also has to confront the fact that Kenny's watching from the main door, and as soon as he goes to the bomb, he's already going to be stared at. Kenny doesn't land the shot. That gives Dennis a bit more time alive, but that's about it. And yeah, Kenny, not too pleased with himself. Missing a shot in a Molotov in that round. And we talked about the B-split being so prevalent for Envious on cash, especially, and that's just a prime example. As soon as you give them mid-control and they've pushed the CTs back, they're so strong at getting into that checkers room, making it really uncomfortable for the CTs. It was just Dennis remaining there in a three-on-one. Really didn't have any chance of whatsoever. And you see Fnatic now, they're going to be at a really difficult economic situation anyway. Might as well go for this. M4s for three of them, Dennis and JW and Olaf. And Crims and Flusher left on a Desert Eagle and a UMP respectively. So Dennis is going to be flushed into a main. Watch the boost right now. It's not going to come into fruition, I don't think, unless Keo feels confident to push through. But there is a Skylight boost going on in B. And Dennis has made it into a main. So they've got good information on both wings of the map. They just need to make sure they lock down middle. And right now, Envious isn't looking to put too much pressure in that position. Dennis does do some decent damage onto Apex there. It's a pretty standard uh, smoke boost there. JW somehow getting down Kiyoshima on the other side of the map, though. Gonna be a five and four in Fnatic's favor. Still not out of the woods just yet. Still very far behind in terms of the equipment. Kenny, no smoke on the garage. Means that he can go for this wide angle. And he'll watch the gap rather than just the corner in case anyone who spots the player at slide needs to get away from it though because he doesn't hit the shot. And he gets dinked up, I believe, through the top of the garage door. Uh -oh. Puts him on 14. And MBK with two kills. JW only gets one back means it's now back to a three and three, and they're gonna try and go on Crims, but the rotations are already coming. And JW's at the truck, good shot to start it off. And JW doesn't yet have the vision to try and find Apex, who needs to be careful on top of that forklift. If he stands up on low HP, it would be an easy wow. shot, but Happy holds the angle, and Envious again, claw back from an unfavorable situation and pull another round out. That was really sick by Happy. Uh, getting out of that squeaky door position, I spoke to you before, uh, how difficult it is to win clutches. That Coming out and getting fragged, that when CTs are waiting for you, that's so sick from him to come out and just hit three kills. Both his teammates are so low, he needs to be the one to step up, and he does it. Amazing stuff from him. MBK really set them up. It would seem like they've, get, they've got way too much freedom there. JW's holding towards the connector area, and he should be at least listening out, holding an off angle so he can actually stop that and eradicate that and actually coming up and killing two teammates in the back. MBK comes the highway, finds two before he's actually rectified. And unfortunately, that is the hard reset coming in for Nanny now. It's 10-1, and they don't really have much to work with here. P250s, and not much else. It's going to be 11-1 in favor of Envious. And Matt, we've wanted a good game. So far, this is not setting up to be one. It's been a good series, though, because it might end up 1-1, Henry. At least it yes, was even, right? That, yeah, that's something to look, to look at, I guess. Maybe we can save this cast with that. <laughs> Stretch, but I'll take it. Yeah. Happy again at home behind the door. But there is 
Two players as well inside A main this time, and Dennis is going to play a slightly different position inside of A. He's going to play up on top of the wooden box, so he'll get a little bit of information. Actually does do some damage. He dinks up Apex, who goes okay. down to flush up immediately after, who follows up with a second on Kenny, and Keo finally gets Olaf back to make it even, but the pistols have started off well, it has to be said. Happy gets one more on Crims, though, and that will start to shift the round because they can't land the final shots. Flusha does get one more, but he's so low on HP. If he pulls this off, it would be absolutely ridiculous, and that's exactly not going to happen. Indeed, it's not. They managed to get three kills, but ultimately another round in the pocket towards Envious. I guess this three kills just helped bump up the money a little bit more. It was going to be a struggle regardless, but you can see it still hasn't really been recovered. Olaf Meister picks up the last M4. No orbs this time, no kits. Half got five smokes, only one incendiary. You'd assume that's going to be going to be dropped towards mid, but let's see how this round goes down. Still a very difficult scenario. I feel like Fnatic are going for the boost towards the B-bomb site. They did shoot out the window just then. Potentially not, though. As we enter round number 13, you can see MVS is slowing things right down right now. Kenny will be boosted up once again, but Olaf's waiting. Yeah, this is the first time we've really seen a forward stance in a while from Fnatic, and it might pay off just because it's been so uncommon. The rest of it appears similar with JW inside a Z. Ooh, that shot, though. That does actually make more noise than damage, I think, because Kenny... Been <laughs> He's by wondering that. what the hell just happened. Yeah, really, down to 64 instead. Well, somehow the face from middle comes out on top, but Kenny has keeps his life. DK has bomb. He's going to smoke, I think. I don't know, he does pop flash. I wonder if he is considering the possibility of Olaf being there. It doesn't quite go far enough out. That was just to check the corner. And now as he turned to his right, they've got another distraction. Olaf goes down regardless. Apex comes over the top to make that kill. So it looked like just in time when a player rotates down, JW gets on the box that it would be enough of a distraction. And Apex beats them to it. Vent's already blown out as well, which means MBK can walk toward that B side. And there won't be any preparation for Flusha other than standing on top of the platform. And Kenny, as soon as the Molotov is thrown, Catches him trying to escape that damage, which allows MBK now to go forward and try and plant Happy. Waiting in mid, going to catch off two rotations. He's been so good tonight. That's so sick. That's very sick. Like, he's just been so solid when he's had multiple targets on his screen. Big flood situations, high pressure uh, scenarios in front of him, and somehow just stays alive, positions himself perfectly, reads the situation, gives it the perfect timing as well, and another three-man for Happy. He must be on a hell of a score right now. He's actually on 15 for nine. That's the MBK leading the charge here, and there's a replay of the screen right now. Really nice controlled spray to finish things off there. So we go into 12-1, and it's going to be... A very difficult buy for Fnatic once again. They've got CZs and Desert Eagles and Dennis with the only rifle here. He's got the Famous in hand. They have got kits to play with, but at this point, they just need the last two rounds, but they can't really justify another ego here. They need to start getting rounds on the board. And Happy is going to again go to this doorway. We'll see if Fnatic want to try and explode through it and catch him off guard. They've got Dennis pushed forward. And a pistol beside the doorway. Fortunately, no happy. He's behind it, it but is. Crims reads that. Very well done. Now that he's got the gun to work with and compliment that of Dennis on this A site. Good flash in A main as well, but it doesn't quite give him the opportunity to take down Apex. However, it does let JW get that trade, and now they're going to push on to Kenny. Great shot up close, but it's JW instead, and now it's an AWP picked up as they start to hoard these weapons. Where'd that AK go? There's a chance for Flusha to pick one up right now as well, but he's still far away from the action. He's still inside. Z connector, nade out though, no ZMBK's up close, relays that information, and Olaf lines it up, so this is the best round we've seen from Fnatic in terms well, of teamwork. Unfortunately for them, they're not out of the woods just yet, because Kiyoshima will be climbing towards B, Flush is going to be the first man to bring in the confrontation, it's a decent grenade coming in, but still has time to work with and reposition himself. Ah. Well, so far though, that doesn't work out, gets one more kill and that's all it's going to be, Fnatic will pick up their second round, only their second round, on a CT side of cash. Well. They did well to even get that. It was quite uh, opportunistic for Crims to walk in at the perfect time towards a squeaky door. Somehow found the Deagle headshot. And then Kenny has stuck with towards A-Man. He got flashed out of position. And then finally, the CTs do have something to work with here. But still, the money is a massive problem with this lot. The final round of the first half. You can see UMP, CZ, Famous. It's going to be a very difficult round for them. And Envious still in good stead to get 13-2 here. Let's see how this one goes down. They showed a little bit of aggression there for Fnatic that round. But I'm sure it's be much more of a passive game. Olaf does have the AWP. He'll be the one looking for the boost this time. Kiyoshima, happy. Straight forward, get the map control. No boost in the vents throughout the entirety of this half, which is something we normally see by default. 
Sheriff Dennis gets caught at the wrong time. The nade out gives Crim's information, though. MBK, he manages right. to get another kill before Crim's trades him. That's hugely problematic, because Kiyoshima also gets him, and now it's a massive disadvantage once more for Fnatic in round 15. This is all the writing, especially with Apex doing that, to go 13-2. to two. MBK, he's been great this map, actually. Like we said, he was very quiet on Inferno, but I'm not even sure how he got out of A-Main, got the kill on towards Forklift, and then towards Highway as well before Crimson took him down. Like, what's that? Why is Crimson not... Like, that's a pretty easy exchange, not even looking at you. And almost gifted the round in that instance, and then there was just a uh, backstab coming from Apex. The contrast that Crimson was really good on Inferno, so this yeah. literally is polar opposites throughout the two games. What was the first half score on Inferno? Was it 13-2? 13-2 or 12-3, I think. So it's literally day and night. Like, there's swapped roles, and... Uh, We've got this complete opposite coming in here. So Envious, after having an absolute horror show on Inferno, have stepped up massively here in the first half of Cash. It's Fnatic with all the work to do now. They switch over to the T side. Let's have a look at their buy and see whether they'll be going for more of a tactical approach here or going straight in with the armor once again. It's going to be Dennis and JW with the first buy. And it's looking like for, yep, full set of armor. No utility to work with. And it's the same for Envious as well. Both teams going in for that deathmatch style. We saw the same thing on Inferno. Let's see how this one goes down. MBK already going to be scouting out a middle. Checks it. Doesn't see aggression. He'll go over toward A. He's actually going to rotate all the way back by truck. It's I thought he would try and get more forward than that with a P2000. This is just a uh, contact play for Fnatic. As soon as you get spotted by the enemy, bust into the bomb site, get the bomb down Ooh. as quickly as possible. Well, that might be why MBK goes back to the truck, as he hits two headshots with the P2000 from that range. Regardless, he gets dinked. Down to 5 HP eventually. And that actually starts to favor Fnatic in the fact that he's so low. More so because Kenny S gets cut off by Flusha, who goes down. Great shot from Kiyoshima. But bomb planted now as well for Fnatic. No kits for Envious. Time to still be worked with at this point in the round. But again, MBK needs to be so careful as he works in. It needs to be Kiyoshima that goes for trades in this case. MBK, go for the bait, find the information. But now Kiyoshima's been spotted. They both face at the same there time. And there was absolutely nothing he could do. So a very fast approach from Fnatic there, walking all the way to storage, making as silent as you can until you get to the main choke point. And as soon as you're spotted, you burst into the bomb site. MBK with two great headshots to kick it off. You thought that may have been the round secured, but Flash is stepping up. It's three kills, bomb goes down, almost impossible retake at that stage. Envious will be going for the force bite once again on the CT side. Kenny Esto finally, he's not investing, man. He's just gone for an upgraded pistol. He knows how important he needs to be on this CT side. So who will be having an AWP? On the first gun round, Olaf Meister coming in as that recon player. He's got the MAC-10. We'll go into these key situations first, but it's a four-man stack from Envious towards the B-bomb site. Try not to show that hand at all. Everyone is holding in. Kiyoshima is going to be the first man to face with the Desert Eagle. Krems, meanwhile, as he goes, has Flusha also pushing beside him, which means they've already covered off the possibility for vents. No Molotov to clear it, but having eyes toward mid the whole round, they should be fairly confident no one's inside of it. Bigger issue is who's going to be the one to take the bait and try and walk in and figure out exactly what's going on inside of the site. I still have MBK towards the A side of the map. He's just listening out for footsteps and see if he can call off that an execution may be coming in. That's going to be the first smoke, and he's going to try and hold them out and funnel them towards that B-bomb site. Smoke lets Olaf get further across that aiming position as well, but Dennis is going to try and walk up. MBK is going to be hearing Olaf and have his focus on that, so this should be pretty straightforward now that they've got control of that highway. Initial damage done, and Olaf isn't going to act on that. I thought he might just try and push in and take advantage, but he's still concerned that there might be more inside of the site. And I think smartly here, Envious is already looking to just keep the armor and pistols. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like then they've lost a full bomb site now. There's going to be a plan down with five and eight players alive with rifles. There's not really much you can do. The pistols will be valuable next round, and the head armor as well, obviously. So let's see what they can do with that. This is smart. Though. They're going to send Olaf at least. Yeah, but he's the, that, that's exactly. the right well, so. Perfect. And he, and he makes a mad ton of money. Money, baby. If he money, finds money, them. You haven't been saying that recently. What's uh, happened? What's I your mean, deal? I have. You keep saying I'm not, but you just don't listen to me. <laughs> What's your deal, man? you got catchphrases. Okay. You're just not using them. Yeah, I know. I mean, if I had a good catchphrase, I might use it more. Yeah, well, we've been trying to think of a catchphrase on that, actually. We're trying to work out what no, is the best one is. No, like, what? don't do that. I'm going to get some ridiculous ones tweeted at me or something. Actually, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's send in your best no. catchphrase on that. You need one. You Unless got a, I get a good one. I'm not You've got a great royalties. hype voice. You just don't use it. You don't have your catchphrase. You don't have your oh, sign-off. Come off. on, I don't use it. <laughs> uh, Olaf's going to get taken down, so they won't get anyone just yet. But they do follow that up. They lost one other rifle on that, but... Ultimately, they'll pick up the round. It's not going to be overly costly for them. It might have been something to play the long game with. 
Well, Olaf goes back to the Mac 10 this round as well, though he knows they're going to have pistols because they got so many of them down, and there's going to be armor at least on Kyoshima. So the Mac 10, one of the most penetration, but that's all they're going to have. Ah, I take that back. Kenny called me a liar. Picked yeah. it up as he left the spawn. Rightly so. Just body armor out for him. Interesting, though, as we said before, he's going to be the AWPer going forward. I prefer him just to kind of keep his money as honest as possible. It's going to be a pretty fast contact play coming in from Fnatic once again, making their hand shown towards that A bomb site and straight towards a forklift. You'd imagine the next frag coming any second now. You expect it hasn't yet arrived. As one law falls back slightly, doesn't want to push through the smoke into MBK, so he'll take an alternate approach by flight, air travel, but unfortunately that plane didn't make it to its destination as MBK is going to ground it. And now he'll look toward Quad to try and do further damage. This P2000 in the pistol round was pretty solid, but it's Apex instead who's going to get the jump on this one with the P250. As the smoke will protect him from the left. He can focus just on Flusha, but he'll take a little damage from his teammate, unfortunately, who now goes down. Watch Happy, though, because he's managed to get in toward that squeaky position. He needs to land the shots. They're both in front of him, and it could have been an easy two if he just slowed it a little more. But instead, Flusha turns around. He'll put him down, and Kiyoshima's going to just Bail out of this one, I think, with the Deagle to hold for exit kills. Yeah, actually a pretty impressive start from Envious there. Didn't really invest too much into the round. Found those first two frags, but as soon as it's planted, and it felt like set up for them there, post-planted um, positions, you felt like the round was only going in one direction. This could be Kiyoshima who will be saving that Deagle, and more importantly, the armor as well. That means he'll have a easier time buying into this round. So Kenny can get the AWP, as I mentioned before. The fact he got bought up last round is just taking it away from himself this round. He's going in completely naked this time. Just an open a flashbang. Let's see what he decides to do. Whether he'll be more passive in the first round, just trying to work the pick, or try and take the game towards the terrorists. It's going to be an AWP on JW as well, so the battle begins. Battle does begin, but not as quickly as Kenny would have liked as he tried to get into a fast position at checker. He nearly had the lineup toward Flusher, who put out a flash in turn, but it really presented itself with that fast smoke on B instead, so... Back toward mid, Olaf looking to try and boost up a teammate. It's Crims and potentially more that are going to go up. In fact, he'll go as well because Flush has got the bomb. Quick little nade out toward the cubby as well, just to make sure no one's pushed up. Apex will have spotted that, though, toward the white box, and now he's got information that they should be flooding down over. He's going to just forfeit mid as well. Now, this is one of the things Apex does. This is how he is good with this rifle. If he can't win the duel initially, he'll rotate all the way around from truck. The unfortunate part is, I think he's realized it from the call with his teammates, he can't make it back to mid in time, so there won't be flank. However, Olaf's going to push through, which could be more problematic, as he's going to go ahead and take battle with the two players rotating out of B, and while that happens, Envious is going to win the duels on A. It leaves Flusher to try and plant at default. And still, Apex stays alive, and has an impact in the round, regardless of the fact that it was locked out. His initial plans were thwarted, and it's just flush a left versus three. All three of them are ways away, but he actually faces that, surprisingly, because he didn't really have an escape plan. I would like to see him try and just stay alive a little bit longer. That looked like a really positive style for Fnatic there. They went for that fast mid-take. One flashbang over, three players emphatically making their way up towards highway. And looking, the, judging by the CT setup, it actually looked like they were on the back foot there. They had the boost on the bomb site. Thinking like they rotated off, they get caught by three players coming up highway, but it's happy to open things up. And really decent crossfires from CT spawn as well. Apex getting a couple of frags. Shuts him down. And that's Envious one step closer here to taking the second map, which is cash. So look at the money now for Fnatic. They've got one player who's just on his CZ. That's going to be JW. That's the downgrade from the AWP he had last time. So let's see what they can do with this one. Kenias going to be going back towards B. This time he's going to play more of a solo role. As... He sets up the turret towards that side. Got to be smoked out for now. And then actually, JW's been taking down 2 HP already. Yeah, big start. He's only on the CZ as well. All off into the corner. Wants to try and find his way through. Kios completely blind, but they're blind in turn. It almost gets awkward. All off will at least find the kill, but Apex has got one in response to that. Kenny never found anything in the back of the site, so Olaf gets a double. And oddly enough, Kenny asks you'd expect him to at least hit one from that position. Yeah. As Happy gets smoked off. MBK, however, could be timely in this situation. Olafmeister is going to get away from it, and he actually, that's going to give it away. Like, he could have caught Olaf off guard if he just went through initially, but I think he expected the up-close positions. Happy with a nade on the low HP JW, but is that enough confidence for them to go in this with the bomb? Having been taking so long, that kill should absolutely end it. Happy needs to get away from this. They're going to go regardless. They want. They know they got a better rounds, but saving and playing the long game doesn't seem to be an option. Olaf far away from this. Happy's going to try and stick it. Happy's got the kid, and Olaf, is he going to get there in time? It's going to be close! Wow. And then we get it all on the call that Olaf is that far away. 
That's crazy. Happy with yet another massive clutch there. And that's so big in the center that it would have been on a pretty hard reset in terms of their cash. And it puts them into map point as well. It's such a difficult one for Fnatic to recover from now. And as you said, really good communication. He went for it. And uh, it's one-on-one -on -one with Olaf Meister. Difficult prospect. But full diffuse comes in. Makes it with about one second to spare. Takes some big balls to pull those kind of plays off. But he did it. And now they have 10 rounds to finish this one off. Apex to kick things off here. And potentially the final round as he takes down Flusher. The rest of Fnatic now, no real control of the map whatsoever. Locked off towards the mid warehouse. You have concealed off Meister trying to work a pick towards a storage, but MBK ready to get flashed in once again, it seems. Apex or MBK, I'm not sure which, if not both. And in fact, it's there going it to be both. MBK gets the kill on all off. Now they've got mid control. You can work up highway crims. That's the response. If you're going to lose a main, Mid coming back in their favor does start to open up some options, but look at how Envious is responding. The minimap, it's just a horseshoe. One player in Z, two player at the top of highway. There's no exit there, and Kiyoshima just waiting in the checker room in case they do go through, and vents are not popped. He will hear this immediately. Three players remain now. Don't really have much control. It's just middle. It's going to help, though. Happy does go down. Doesn't really inflict any damage, and they come one step closer here. JW still boosted up towards mid, seeing if there's any reaction from the CTs right now. 45 seconds still remain, so... Only problem with Fnatic is they only have one flashbang to work with. Make it two now. JW does salvage one from one of the corpses. They still need to work out what their main objective is. Looks like an A split coming in as JW in the day storage. The rest of his teammates are on highway, but smoked out for now. Apex holding this angle, though. He knows that they've got mid. He knows to look that way, but he, oh, timing yeah. is everything. He manages to take down the player in A main, but it's traded. Nonetheless, MBK, he'll hold it. He keeps it together from the truck, and that will mean that the series splits 1-1. And I have to say, that's very impressive. Envious, it goes to show this top teams, the mental fortitude. Yeah, they get absolutely. absolutely obliterated on Inferno, and they come back and do the same in turn to Fnatic on cash. 13-2 on your terrorist side on cash. That's pretty nuts. The amount of clutches and great team play they had going forward. It was just like a different team arrived on the server for Envious there. Like, it was just a, a fantastic overall performance from them. Really enjoyed that loose play style and the B splits coming in and the simple A executions as well. One smoke towards highway, flashbangs, double, double Molotov quad. Get in there and utilize the amazing entry potential you have with that tag team combo. Kiyoshima and Apex doing some absolute work there as well. Kenny S had a really impressive game, but that's just so crazy, right? The fact they actually lose the first map 16-6 and they come back and just batter their opponents in the same fashion. And it, well, yeah, it, was, it wasn't even like it was one player stepping up so much as the teamwork was on. We saw that in that four versus two clutch, how timely everything worked for them and how good yeah. the call was. But I'm sure there's uh, a few minds on the other side of the room that definitely could say a whole lot more about it. So we'll send it back over to them. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, what a fantastic uh, turnaround there from Envy. And what a fantastic match from Happy. Some huge clutches from him in that game. Definitely. And the most important thing compared to the first uh, map is that Envy has actually got off to, a, to that uh, good yeah. start. And I have to point out straight off the bat, after winning the pistol round, when Fnatic forced in the second round, what Envias did there was just beautiful, basically. So you could see that they only had two AKs, two SMGs, and a pistol on Apex. So he just went for the P250 and bought all the nades, and they uh, isolated the, the player in checkers. It was JW. They threw three Molotovs there to, to ensure that if someone's there rotate, to kill yeah. him, and then they turned all the way around to A. So the point behind this is... You're, especially in the second round, if you waste three Molotovs to, to do something, to clear something, like chances are that you are committed to that bomb site. That's what Envy was counting so they on. They fully rotated. So you could to see it, yeah. that all of the Fnatic players rotated towards B, and that gave uh, Envy us a clear site. In the end, it was, <laughs> it was very it close. It was still a yeah. close round, which only uh, comes to say how hard it is to play against Fnatic. So yeah. they get the perfect. Like, perfect tactical approach. They do the perfect thing strategically, and still it ends up being like a 1v2 for Apex and wins it because of the round time. Yeah, this, this is the thing that I was talking about earlier with the Mollies. They do this every time they know there's a team against them, probably on CZs or maybe forced up, and it works time and time again. But this time they had that level of adaption off the back of it. Normally they'd commit maybe towards B, you know, hit JW, get him down, after the Mollies come out towards checkers, and then go towards site. This time, as you said, hitting the rotate, perfectly played out. And they do this several times throughout the map. I think it was in the sixth round as well, when Keo went big. And it's like, when big players step up as well, they can close out the rounds just perfectly. But even into the gun rounds, we saw what Envy also are showing on this map more than others, is their slow preference for playing rounds. You saw hits coming out at minus 30 seconds, slowly it towards A well. with Happy coming through Squeaky. And it's, it's just really impressive. They have such a nice kind of set to go to, that mid presence as well, constantly splitting towards B, but not necessarily committing there. You know, we, we didn't get to see too much of the other side of things because obviously it was a relatively 
relatively quick game, but still, I think this is a really impressive display and how well they bounce back. And yeah. also, <laughs> Fnatic helped them out a bit because they decided to force not only in the second round, but in the third round as well. And that bit them hard, and, yeah. And, yeah. And even though they, they tried to save the, the armors once they lost control of the site, once they realized they would lose the round, it still gave uh, Envias a 4-0 lead, and they had a lot of bank as well, so they could go for those more loose plays, maybe take a, a bit more risk in their plays, and yeah, th a couple of those uh, clutch rounds from, from Happy. I think Happy is the best lurker in the world when it comes to uh, cleaning the round out. Like, his yep. team gets an entry kill, or even two, and I think at, at that point, once they have like a 5v3 or a 4v2 or 4v3, whatever, I think Happy is the best player at maximizing like his use from that point yeah. on you could see in one round they got entry into b side he got just three kills in like five seconds on yeah. mid on all of the players rotating from a and it's just uh it's just really really uh enjoyable to watch him uh, when that, he plays that that well. 2v4 he did was was special it, yeah. it was a very yeah. very well played he was switched even lagging to, even switched <laughs> to the orb <laughs> yeah Possibly got hit by something. Uh, lag definitely struck in, but uh, on 180 ping, he still managed to land that last uh, orb shot onto Crim's point blank. Yeah, yeah, it was an amazing round, and but we also have to point out MBK. Yes, really stepped, yes. Really stepped up his game. You know, get, getting a. a it was a dangerous moment, and they, then he just bump, bump, bump. Three yeah. in a three in one clip, no problem. Well, I think every single player had their moments, mm. apart from maybe Kenny S. I, I really yes, didn't see yeah. him shining as much as maybe I'd expect. But then again, it was like Apex in the opening rounds. Clutch two rounds back to back. Every time on the A side when they got the bomb down, he was sat there with the P250 initially, and then the second round, he also managed to do it. But Kenny was just a little bit quiet for my taste. You know, Kenny can be such a big player. And, and it also seemed like he was being frustrated by some of the <laughs> things happening on yeah. the map. The which molly is, going on yeah. the roof in mid, like everything went wrong. He was yeah. missing everything, yeah. He couldn't, couldn't throw Yeah, a, but it's something he needs to pay attention to, you know, if he's, especially if his team is do, doing so well, there's no reason for you to get frustrated. Just, you know, Forget about it. Try to play your own game. Yep. You know, you never know, especially against a team of uh, like Fnatic, when they're gonna start coming back and when you will actually need uh, to step in for step up for your team. And if you're, you know, frustrated by those little things, but when everything is going well, that can affect your game definitely. Yeah. So fantastic stuff tonight. No doubt about it. They split one-one. Let's check out the results to confirm everything for tonight. Of course, it started off with a 16-7 on both maps for Astralis over Flipside. Didn't really expect anything else. And then it was a 1-1 split for Fnatic and their first loss for Fnatic, of course, in the league does take them 16-5. So they are now, what, 4-5-1, and one, I believe? 5-1 yeah. in the this league this overall. Is, this is so weird looking at the scores. <laughs> it doesn't represent has, the games, because right? Because the thing is, like we said, we were expecting a close game, but this is exactly what happens, you know, you, you just had the complete opposites in two, in two games. Mm. Both teams showing how good they are when they get an early lead, and how they good they are at actually it. exploiting mm. it, and how good they are controlling the pace of the game, and showing that they were both able to do that to each other in a span of an hour really like shows you why they are at, at the top of the food chain right now. They can now. reset their mental state, of yeah. course. And of course, coming up tomorrow, let's talk about those games. Of course, it's going to be some pretty big ones. The first showing of NIP as well. Virtus Pro, can they get a win on the board? That's the question. They're up against Na'Vi. It's not going to be an easy one for them. And then Dignitas up against NIP. That should be a belter of a match, I feel. Yeah, for me, it's just seeing what role now Pit or Pyth or Pith, however you want to say his name, I've always gone by Pit by this point, but how he's settling in and what sort of role he's now going to take in that lineup for me, especially against a team like Dignitas who are on the rise, they've been playing well, they've certainly been challenging teams out, so I think that's going to be a real kind of tough test for him to begin with, but Virtus Pro just, just have as, just as many question marks around their performance. Absolutely, yeah. against Navi, it's going to be a real tough old task for them, of course. Don't forget also, there is action happening in America. If if you really want to watch it, I know this guy doesn't want to, that's for sure, but a lot of you guys might want to see it. It is going to be Complexity versus Luminosity and then Optic versus uh, Splice. Well, so that will be all like happening. Luminosity. There Luminosity you go, see? You can get them to see some stomps of American teams. <laughs> should be, it should be fun for you guys. That's going to be kicking off at 2 a.m. Central European time. It's around about three hours time. Be sure to tune in for that one. But for us tonight, we are done. We will see you tomorrow at 7 Central European time.